indeed for joining us. It's just after half past seven on this very sunny Sunday, July the 17th. I'm joined by Ali Mirage, who uh, is uh, taking us for a romp through this morning's papers. So, um, more politics, I assume. Yeah, indeed. And this is classic, uh, David. Uh, this is a picture of uh, Boris Johnson in a Top Gun outfit. Uh, oh, this is his inner Tom Cruise. Yeah, he's very yes. good at the photo op, isn't he? Um, so he's never he's never more comfortable than Brazil. He does look, he, he could go in Top Gun Maverick to a degree, could he? Rene? He obviously always looks ridiculous, don't they? You wouldn't have photos done if you didn't think you looked good. And he always looks ridiculous. <laughs> do, do you think he's got insight? I actually thought he looked all right this morning. Do you remember the one hanging from the zip line? Oh, yeah, that was a great one. He looked like a bag of flour. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, look, this is really interesting because this is saying, in the, in the, this is in the mail, it's saying that Johnson's allies are very upset about how Rishi Sunak handled questions around integrity of the Prime Minister in that debate the other night. And it's saying, uh, Mr Johnson is keen to stay out of the contest, but his allies are clear. If Mr Sunak continues to cast doubt on Mr Johnson's integrity, then there will be consequences. So clearly not well, staying well, well, Having this leadership election, I'm a bit lost here. Wasn't the whole thing about integrity? My word, this is uh, this is really interesting. There's a there's a there's a point on the um, on the front of the observer here, which is also um, taking an interesting tack. And this is Alok Sharma, the uh, president of COP26, uh, who's got cabinet rank. Uh, sensible person who managed those uh, whole negotiations, the run-up to them, and also uh, sort of presided over them. And if you remember, at the end, was very upset about the fact that they had to water down language about phasing down the use of coal rather than phasing out. And he's saying that um, uh, as Europe b burns, climate chief warns, I may quit if new PM dumps net zero plan. Now, this is something he's very worried about because some of the candidates are not being clear on their commitments about net zero. I mean, they were asked this question, they sort of kind of committed to it, but it's not really a big feature in this campaign, as obviously it's very hot weather at the moment, which is also being linked to the whole thing. It should be. It, it should, should be. be. It's, it's should be summer. No, it should be a big feature of this it campaign. Be, and I also think we should put it to the people. Nobody's ever been asked how much they want to give up, how much they want yes. to spend to reach these targets. And whilst we're being told constantly that this is settled science, firstly, science is never settled. And it is not settled science. 100% it isn't settled science. And we need to lay it out for people. You are going to have to spend £30,000 in the next 10 years if we are to reach this target or whatever it is. Yeah. Look, I, look, I, 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 I hear where, where Rene's coming from. I take a slightly different view. I think that there will always be contrarian views on science. I think climate change is a big issue. You can see that from the from the wildfires in Greece. You can see that from uh, the floods in Bel Belgium and the Netherlands in the last year. I think decarbonisation is a really important plan. But where I do agree is people need to be honest about the cost mm -hmm. and how it's going to all be paid for. I agree. And also, by the way. Uh, how we're going to fund our base load power because wind and solar it's all very well when the sun's shining and the wind's <laughs> blowing but you do need base load power which is why nuclear is back on the agenda you look at size well see uh, why up was up. it ever off it well that's a good point david i mean you know these things come uh, in fads but the reality is one of the key things on the war in ukraine uh, which is also being featured in, the, in this leadership election is Energy security is a massive issue. Look what's happening with Germany. Of course. Right now. And I think most people like the idea of net zero, but the question is over what timeline. Now, saying it by doing it by 2030, I would argue, is far too fast. And actually, I, I like the fact that Liz Truss said we'd suspend that, look at a longer term yeah. plan, but also why don't we start fracking? Why don't we start releasing the treasure that's underneath our feet? People need energy, we need energy security. It's under our feet. Well, Truss is talking about fracking, is one of the issues. Is writing about now she's saying that if there's local support for fracking she would be in favor of it now we know that there are issues around it it could affect you know again it's up for debate and it should be looked at very carefully there are issues around the water table getting affected with certain chemicals you need to inject in the air i'm not an expert on fracking but i think there needs to be debate around it and she's calling for that seriously but energy security linked to our security more generally is becoming a really potent mm. theme now particularly with what's happening in ukraine and, uh, and the war in europe
Absolutely. No, okay. None of them are talking about the war in Ukraine, though, are they, Ellie? None of them. Well, you know, one of the interesting things, Renee, really, about this is that, you know, it's not a, a question of a billion here or a billion there for Ukraine. It's the question about the cost on energy that we are going to suffer. And I'm not saying that we should change the policy towards Ukraine. I'm just saying, please be honest with the people about the economic pain that could be here for months, if not years. I mean, Putin's closed the gas flows to Nord Stream 1 <laughs> gas pipeline. Exactly. It might be closed for months. And he's turning it on again on the 21st, you know. Well, supposedly. <laughs> but let's be honest about the cost involved. Well, absolutely. And of course, Keir Starmer's in Germany trying to get lessons on, on what they're doing in Germany. Germany is not a country I'd take lessons from. No. Well, well not on this. On not on this. <laughs> I mean, Angela Merkel's gone very, very quiet. You know that they take 40% of their energy needs from Russia. And it's a, it's a massive issue. It's really a Achilles heel. And look, Olaf Scholz said, uh, the Chancellor of Germany said, after the invasion, it was Eine Zeitenwender, an epoch-changing event. He was, he was certainly right about that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Anything else for us? Uh, well, no. I mean, look, the, 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 it's really being dominated uh, by, by the leadership Thing. There is um, also a piece on the front of the Telegraph here. Consider working from home in heatwave, says Minister. This is Kit Morehouse. I mean, look, let's get real. We know it's hot. It, I mean, I, I was at a is lecture. It? Yeah. Look, I was at a, <laughs> I, I mean, a, I was at a lecture by Tony Blair yesterday. Like that. Now that's a person who hasn't forgotten a soundbite or two. This He's is still how got you the spend magic. Your <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I need to get out more, but it was a beautiful day at Ditchley. Absolutely wonderful. Um, but it was uh -huh. warm. But just look. Use protection. Be careful if you're elderly. Stay indoors. If you're vulnerable, stay indoors. And then, uh, look, I love I love the warm weather. Um, so let's spend a few tunes. I don't need to go to Ibiza this year. I'm happy to complimentarily put out some house beats on the on the beach or somewhere somewhere. Where's, wow. Where's the I know you like the odd tune, uh, Dave. I do like the odd tune. I mean, but look, where's the invite? Firstly, it's going to be raining by Wednesday. Apparently, in lots of places. Secondly, does this not come all the way back to personal responsibility for our health and allowing people to take sensible decisions? We didn't do it during the pandemic, and we should have done. We're not doing it now when the weather gets hot. You know, why am I going to be allowed? to get on a plane on Wednesday to go somewhere, somewhere where it's going to be hotter. And you're paying money to go somewhere Absolutely. hotter. Absolutely. Why are they not stopping me? But, but actually, we did this yesterday on, on Weekend Breakfast where we were showing the weather maps, and the fact is that actually what they've done is they've changed the colours of the weather they maps. They have. So that they were yellow and green and everything was sunny and bright. Now they're sort of um, amber and red, mm -hmm. but actually with the same temperatures. So It's fear porn again, all over again. And it seems to be the way that our media is approaching every problem but, now. But, and yesterday, Boris Johnson was accused of not not actually t uh, handling that Cobra meeting over the weather. It's weather. And actually, I don't think, actually, he should be involved I in agree. that, given that he's actually leaving. And he's the Prime Minister. I mean, a weather meeting. <laughs> well, look, one of the th one of the serious things is the resilience of our national infrastructure. I mean, yesterday I was trying to go. Well, to, that's a really good point. When I was trying yes. to go to Charlbury in the, in the Cotswolds yesterday. I mean, the the, 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 the rails were buckling mm -hmm. on the train train look chasm, and this is on the front page of the Sunday Times here, saying that uh, mass disruption across the rail network is expected tomorrow and Tuesday, with some trains forced to a twenty mile an, an hour crawl uh, as Britain hit by its first ever blast of forty degree heat. I mean, come on. We need to build resilience in yes. one aspect, right? both on the flooding side and the hint side, because the economy needs to keep... And, and I think we also need to look at things like the water table. Why are we not thinking about desalination plants, for example? We're an island. We need to actually look at our critical infrastructure. As you, and you're right. So, for example, with energy, we need an energy mix. Well, we do. And we need a long-term plan. We need energy security. And I can tell you, in the banking world, uh, there's a lot more focus from regulators now about the loans that banks make to a renewable energy project. Are they resilient or not? Right? They've been looking at the resilience of, to flooding or to climate change and all these things because national infrastructure needs to be able to cope with these things. Yes, it's certainly And it does. certainly and it does cope in other countries, doesn't it? It, it? Yes, it does. I mean, also, I think there is a serious message here, and Renee, perhaps you'd like to, to come in on this. For elderly, vulnerable people, the yeah. heat is a problem. Of course. And you need to be prepared. For children, they have high surface area to volume ratio. They need to be, you need to be concerned about small people. Yes. So let's just get the message out there continuously, not just for two days of the year about how to behave and how to actually protect yourself in extreme weather but let's not be hysterical and we are being hysterical yes and of course i've seen people who are out in the sun they don't wear sunscreen they haven't got a hat on they're out in the midday sun the hottest time of the day 
That is not sensible behaviour. There will be lots of sunburned people walking around this week. We will all see Absolutely. them. Well, I think there's another issue. A&E will be full of people who are sunburned, who've drunk too much, dehydrated. Well, well, just on that, just on that point, actually, on the A&E point, we've heard in the last couple of days on this NHS thing where you've got ambulances waiting 11 hours outside and it's all being blocked yeah. out because of the social care thing, uh, because people are not being released into social care and they're, they're bed blocking yeah. hospital. Again, you know, we talked, you, you raised the point about national insurance, David. I mean, ultimately, we need to try and fund social care. I know in the short term it was being diverted to the NHS on the back of COVID, 6.5 million waiting lists. But we need to get people into social care, and that costs money. Again, we need to have an honest debate about it in the public, about all these things, right? But it's and not it's necessarily security. money, Ali. Tell me, tell it's, me it's, really. it's about structure, and it's about social care started being pulled apart when we tendered competitive tenders. And all of these companies tendered as low as they possibly could to get the contracts and actually they got to the point where they tendered prices that they couldn't deliver the service with. So then staff got underpaid because they cut and cut and cut that. They left, then they didn't have enough. It's about this disparate spreading out of the NHS rather than centralising it. Well, well, I couldn't agree more. And also then we heard about the fact the NHS is laying on more call handlers. What, what is the point of more call if handlers? There when, any more if there aren't any more ambulances. It's a, it's a serious problem, right? But backing up outside casualties, it's, uh, it's really, it's yeah. really dire. It is. Yeah. Ali, thank you so much for coming pleasure, in. It's David, a great pleasure you. to well, see we you. We look forward to the debate. Well, indeed, <laughs> and there will be many. Thank you very much indeed for the moment, Ali. That's great. Uh, you're watching Talk TV. We're broadcasting live from the Talk Radio studios.